All right, Packers, uh, we've got a, a second round here of, of major U.S. history videos, right? So these key events, part two, you've already been in here on Schoology and opened the folder up. So you've got the video, you've got the notes, right? Just like we did last week, where we've got the fill in the blanks. And again, if you learn better with writing them down in your notebook, do that. Fantastic. I think it's a great way to learn. There's a lot of studies out there that suggest that when you actually physically write it out, um, it may, in fact, imprint itself on your brain in better ways. So you've got the video, you've got the note sheet, and you feel comfortable pausing this so that you can write stuff down. Now, um, why are we doing this, right? That's, that's a big, we got to ask that question. Um, and uh, number one, if we're talking about a person, your grandma, your boyfriend, doesn't matter. If we just say they love puppies, that's not enough of the story. So for us to study U.S. history, we've got to try to look at the whole or as much of the story as we can. Just like if we studied an individual person, we know that whoever you're, you know, BTS is not just about the music. We know that Zac Efron is not just about high school musical. We can't just study one thing. And then the other thing is, wouldn't be a surprise when we're learning Spanish, we can't just learn every single word one by one, or if we're learning English, we can't just learn dog, cat. We have to start to see, hear it in action, right? That's why so many people who have learned another language on their own talk about they watched a lot of TV or they watched a lot of movie or they listened to a lot of music. So when we look at the whole event, or the whole story of the United States at once, it's a little bit confusing, but it's just like watching that show in Spanish, where if we watch it long enough or watching our first movie in English, if we watch it long enough, we start to get begin to see how it all fits together. Now, the way that I talk about this stuff is super unfair, right? We're not getting into the depth. We're not getting into the, all the details. And so feel free to come back with questions, arguments, ideas about the way I present them, because that's what history is. It's about the discussion about what happened. It's not just memorizing dates and times. Um, we've already talked about hitting pause. So the first one on your note sheet is one that if you were a ninth grade Packer, you already talked a ton about. World War I from 1917 to 1918. The United States was involved in World War I in support of the side called the Allies. And uh, it was in the later stages of the conflict. So that part is important from the American perspective. The United States was not there for most of the time. But World War I was a heartbreaking event, and it sets the stage for World War II, if you remember correctly. Now, again, hit pause, finish writing that down, and then move on to the next one. Um, women's suffrage happened in 1920. Suffrage is a fancy history word for the right to vote. So after decades of protest, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution which is like a rule change, as we'll talk about. An amendment is a rule change that ensured women can vote in the United States, right? So two things that are really important. One, it took a lot of protest, some of it pretty radical. Uh, in fact, in England, the right to vote, one of the protests was a woman ran in front of a racehorse and it didn't go well. So all kinds of radical protest and the other Trivia question that a lot of people like to bring up is some historians report that the first women to vote under the 19th Amendment or because of the 19th Amendment were in South St. Paul. Why do they put these two women up here? Good trivia question. But they're both parties, uh, most recent female vice presidential nominees, right? Of course, Hillary Clinton had the Democratic nominee for president. Um, Geraldine Ferraro was the first female vice president. I'm just throwing out some names at you. Point is, we live in a time where there are more female politicians than ever before. And that's in part because before 1920, it was, it was not guaranteed that women could be involved in politics. This one is pretty famous, the stock market crash of 1929. The year is pretty apparent. Um, it says, on October 29th, 1929, after years of risky behavior by investors, that is, they were buying things or putting their money in things that they could not stand to lose, the stock market crashed, which meant that many Americans lost their life savings. They had been saving up their whole life. This was going to be the money that they could use, and then it was all gone. 
was one of several factors that contributed to this time period called the Great Depression, right? So the stock market thing, there's this place in New York City where people can buy and sell little pieces of a company. So if you had, I don't know, you could look it up, a, you could buy a little piece of the company Apple that makes the iPhone, it might cost you $3,000, but then you would technically own a little bit of that company. And you can do that for a bunch of companies at a building like this, that's called the New York Stock Exchange. In 1929, that system essentially failed or crashed. And so a lot of people lost a lot of money and it helped trigger this period in United States history when a lot of people didn't have jobs, didn't have enough money, didn't have enough food. Some people are nervous, right, about our economic system right now with so many people having lost jobs in 2020. Uh, World War II, one of the more famous events in, in U.S. history, even though it didn't very much take place on U.S. soil. Um, from 1941 to 1945, the U.S. was involved, but just like in World War I, the fighting was going on long before the U.S. got involved. And the U.S. joined the Allies to defeat this thing called fascism. Fascism is this belief that one leader or a small group of people were always right, anyone that disagreed with them were enemies, and that uh, people had to follow what they said no matter what. We'll talk more about this in trimester three, um, but it really is the turning point in the 20th century, that is the 1900s. Plenty of video games and movies for you to watch in the meantime until we get to it. Now this one, um, the Korean conflict, um, some people call it the Korean War, but technically we'll just use the phrase conflict within the Cold War, which is what we'll talk about. In 1953, there was a truce declared in the Korean conflict but no peace treaty signed ever. So North Korea with support from communism fought against South Korea with support from the United States. There was a long bloody war. They signed a truce, which means they said we'll stop fighting, but they never actually signed a peace treaty ending the fighting, which is one of the reasons why President Trump's efforts to find some sort of common ground with North Korea has been so interesting to so many people because technically South Korea is an ally of the United States and is still not at peace with North Korea. So lots of layers to this, lots of connections to modern day and happened starting back in the 1950s. Um, in 1962, Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez down here below joined two groups they were working with to form the United Farm Workers Union, or the UFW, which is still around. And as crazy as it sounds, they just wanted farm workers who literally feed us, who, who pick the food that feed us, to not get sprayed with chemicals and to have bathrooms where they worked. Uh, real basic human right kind of things, but they needed to do extreme things. At one point, um, Cesar Chavez did not eat for over three weeks in order to draw attention to these issues. So mainly supported or mainly focused on the Latino and Asian American communities, but this is a huge movement that started in the 1960s. Now the Cold War, which I mentioned in light of the Korean conflict, went on for a long time. I know you touched on this probably a little bit in some of your other classes, but from 1945 until 1989, so from the end of World War II until I was a little kid, the United States with its capitalist system and the Soviet Union with its communist system were in this huge battle where they never directly fought, at least out in the open. There's a new video game coming out about the sort of like secret fighting that happened, but it was a really the controller after World War II of a lot of things uh, that happened in the United States. During that time, all this stuff happens, including the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Now, a mistake would be to focus the Civil Rights Act on this guy down here, the President of the United States, Lyndon Baines Johnson at the time. He did work to pass this law that made segregation and discrimination illegal, but that would be wrong to focus on him, although he played an important role. The only reason that it happened is that African-American protests that had been occurring since before the Civil War, since there had been slavery. There had been protests against 
uh, discrimination and segregation. But it began to gain more support in the 1960s, sometimes through controversial protests. Um, and that's a big part of U.S. history. Our people, whether it's women or, or farm workers or African Americans or other groups, will continue to say this, who begin to push, right, in different ways and protest, and then um, change begins to happen. 1968, up until 2020, has often been looked at as one of the most radical years in U.S. history. So much happened. Uh, there were assassinations of Martin Luther King and somebody running for president named Robert Kennedy. Richard Nixon becomes president. He is a very influential president. And then this Tet Offensive in Vietnam. So because of the Cold War, the United States was fighting in a country called Vietnam. And the Tet Offensive was a major event in that story, right? Now, again, this is one of those examples where it's like, who is he talking about? What does this even mean? We're not interested in the details right now. We just want to kind of have parts of the story. So we begin to tell the whole thing, right? So it's like we're learning about your grandma and you're like, she grew up somewhere in the South. I don't remember exactly where, right? We don't have to know all the details, but we want to kind of have some of these things um, touched on in our head. I know the highlights aren't there, but I'm 79% sure it's assassinations, Richard Nixon, and Tet Offensive in Vietnam. You can send me a message and tell me how close I got. And here's the last one. I can see I'm hitting my ceiling here. I don't like these videos to go on uh, much longer than 10 minutes, and I'm, I'm almost done. But the picture is fantastic. So here's Richard Nixon, President of the United States, the first and only president who's ever walked away from the job. He's quit, technically, he's called resigned. And he did that because he knew he was going to be impeached, which means investigated by the legislative branch, which is what happened to President Trump. He was impeached. But rather than go through that, Richard Nixon becomes the first president to quit or resign. And yet here he is on his last moments as president, and he looks like he's won. He gives that, some people call it a peace sign, but some people call that a victory sign, a V for victory. And he is so confident. He is such a politician till the very end that even as he does something that some people would say is embarrassing or worse, uh, he still has the audacity, the charisma, although that's not usually a word used with Richard Nixon, but he still has the confidence to look as if he's a winner, even as he does something nobody's ever done before. There's 10 more events in U.S. history um, that are going to start to fill in the whole story. It's okay if it seems confusing. It's okay if it seems like it went fast. Just hit pause, go back, double check your notes. Thanks for listening.